Hello everyone. Let's look at public speaking. I have seen a lot of people complain that they had fear of public speaking and I wondered why. Is it a, such a horrendous exercise or is it a fearful exercise or is it a threatening exercise? When you see people we normally have an internal fear. But how do I overcome the fear when I go for a public speaking? So let's discuss the art of public speaking. How do you attract the audiences? How do you mesmerize the audiences with your spellbounding speeches? and how do you overcome the fear all that is what we're going to discuss in this presentation and i hope this presentation will give you the confidence to face the public with with all that might that you have so let's see so first let's see what are the problems that people have they have to understand the crowds and they have to see that they have to shed their inhibitions when speaking so inhibitions something which tells within me that can i do this can i do that am i able to do that can i overcome that so these kind of inhibitions are something to restrict a person's freedom to think and present so one has to rely on preparation so public speaking generally makes you feel that you have to have a complete knowledge in the subject which you are going to present so completely prepare with the subject and then start executing the subject one has to master the art of good presentation and one has to have a great articulation of expression when one is speaking to the public so this good presentation and articulation of expression shedding the inhibitions and preparation is what we are going to see one after the other in this video and i hope and believe strongly that this video will help you to overcome the fear of public speaking so how do i go with the presentation now very very important is when i start the presentation i should be able to understand who am i addressing to and how am i going to address have a very interesting insight into the presentation i take a point of example and then i talk about this example in the initial stages so that the audiences are attracted to my presentation if i'm going to start the presentation straight away with the topic this might not attract the attention of the audience so to introduce give an example and talk about a particular example for example if you have so many people on the dais tell the audience that the number of people on the dais are more than the number of audience and then introducing each one of the persons present on the dais will take longer time than the discussion of the topic itself so that they keep them in the good moment and draw the audience to enjoy for a moment of what you're going to present and continue this till the conclusion of your presentation now important factors while presenting always a lot of people believe that i can go for the presentation in a very casual manner but please understand going to a presentation in a casual manner is definitely not a right thing to do wear a very formal dress that would be apt to the occasion guys please understand that when we go for a marriage we know what dress to wear when we go to a seminar we know what dress to wear when we go to the college we know what dress to wear so when you know that every occasion has its own dressing style let's wear a dress that would be the best fit to the occasion and wear a very formal dress it should not be informal since you are addressing a crowd which is very formal and which they expect you to be very formal so the expectations of the audience has to be met and your dress has to be meeting to their expectations so let it not be gaudy let it not be brighter than the lights please understand that a gaudy dress can be very good when you are walking on the streets but not when you are walking on the dais so when you are on the dais when you are the center of attraction your dress has to be very clear very neat and it should not overcome the lights it should be shining in the lights not that the dress pales in the light but brightens up and dress that radiates a lot of people wear white you know white is a beautiful color and the reason why a lot of people wear white color shirts or white color tops is that that color radiates on the face and people would look bright so these are all certain insights that one person has to understand that as to the dress of the color i mean the color of the dress matters a lot when you're speaking on a particular occasion body language now again i've seen people come up and say how do i stand and how do i uh, should i have a folded hands or should i leave my hands free please understand the person's body language tells the audience as to how confident you are the more the confident the more the gait of your walk itself indicates your level of confidence one has to move across the dais while presenting if you are able to move across the dais while dais while presenting it reflects on the confidence that you carry and also makes the people believe that you are moving with confidence and you are addressing all of them and not a particular section of the audience address all the audience while speaking this is what i said when you walk on the dais you are able to meet the audience 
all through and not a particular section of the audience this make them believe that they are participating in the conversation make the conversation more interactive and participating what do you mean by interactive try to ask them questions try to elicit some ideas from them try to see how they think about the topic or what they think about the topic we know that you have a particular grasp on the topic but when you are addressing an audience let them feel that they are a part of the conversation let them feel that they are being given importance by asking some questions so when your interaction is improved when the people believe that they are participating it makes the conversation and the presentation more lively than being loud have a question answer session in case it's possible at the end of the session only if you are fully prepared what do you mean by that if my knowledge and subject is very weak please 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 don't go with the q and a session because some questions might embarrass you there which will all together fail the session so don't go for a q and session q and a session if you are not fully prepared so if you have complete knowledge go with it so that you are able to answer any questions and finally don't me don't be constant or don't be immobile keep moving across the dice even when you are asking the questions and moving across eye contact a lot of people believe that 55% of your presentation lies on the eye contact since when you are consistently staged for example look at the podiums people when they address from the podiums they are normally stuck to the podiums they don't even move from the podiums so they want all the audience attention towards the podium which makes it very distracting and only one particular side or section of the audience will be addressed on the other hand look at the possibility of you taking a cordless mic and then moving across throughout the dais and you are able to meet everyone talk to everyone single out everyone individually so that what happens when you do this is you also have the confidence rising your fear shedding and your eye contact is able to meet a lot of people if your eyes are constant at one place obviously you will feel the fear since you feel that someone is watching you consistently and that watching consistently or gazing at you consistently can cause you some fear in the presentation wherein you will forget the presentation of what you intend to do and the content of what you intend to present so it's better that you don't have a constant focused eye contact but a moving eye contact wherein you are able to address all the sections of the audience and you are able to see the, all the audience clearly seek their attention through participation and interaction and give them references as many examples and allow them to speak if they want to give them a chance to speak so that you are also feeling free to answer the questions the next one is voice a lot of people believe that the voice is shrieky their voice is fast paced their voice is not audible but please understand you have to practice in such a way that your voice doesn't make noise but your voice is attractive and it's audible to a lot of people so let it be audible check the mic and its volume which is very very important even before i start i have to have my mic checked since it might sometimes come out with a bizarre sound which will completely disrupt the whole audience so have a good mic in this case i would like to say that please have a good rapport with the technician since the technician is the one who keeps lowering or increasing the volume and if that man has something against you obviously your presentation is lost because the controls of the volume is with the technician who will always have a good smile on the face but have a bad presentation so your presentation depends on your rapport with the technician so have a nice rapport with everyone who is technically supporting you so that you are not lost there carry a collar mic as i said earlier or a cordless one so that you are able to move freely and then speak freely next is what i should i should not do now let's look at the do's and don'ts do not show any haste in your presentation that's very very important don't try to run through the presentation don't try to make feel others feel that you have some other appointment and you're able to make it faster and then you have to go to some other place because people will not be able to appreciate if you are making it very faster they would like to see that they are given importance so do not run through the presentation do not wear gaudy dresses when you are presenting do not use high level language please understand high level language can be very distracting and jargons which audience might not understand can be very distracting since they would not like to know the meanings or they should not be running to the dictionary to find out what is that you want to say so make it as simple as possible because effective communication is making others others understand what you intend to say but not what they should fear of presenting so make the presentation as simple as possible do not make the presentation controversial and do not have statistics which might be redundant please update with statistics suppose i am talking about something with regard to the public policy i should be able to talk about what is happening immediately about a particular policy 
and not about something which is obsolete or redundant and not in terms of its presentation today. So try to make it very clear and updated. For example, if I'm talking about marketing techniques, let me talk about marketing techniques which are prevalent in today's world and not which were happening in the 18th century before industrial revolution. That doesn't make sense. So try to be updated with your information and statistics when you are presenting it. Don't make it controversial so that people will have a doubt that confused in their minds as to what you intend to say. Do not match to what they know. Do not be boring. Use proverbial dialects. Try to see that you have certain dialects from movies. For example, take some particular anecdote from a movie and try to relate it to the presentation so that people make it interesting and people connect to the presentation immediately. Do not end the lecture abruptly. Do not do that. Never uh, end the lecture abruptly. Try to prolong the lecture and try to complete it in a very smooth transition. Do not keep your hands in the blazer or coat pockets as a signify fear. So keep your hands open as openness is always welcomed. Be confident, be emphatic and be assertive of the presentation. This is very, very important. Confidence gives you assertiveness. Assertive is I know, I am clear, I have an idea and I am presenting the idea because I have a clear assertive opinion of this. I have a statistical relevance which can prove this. So if I can have that kind of a confidence, your presentation can definitely be very attractive and let the language be very simpler and articulate without ambiguity. Don't give contradictory opinions by yourself. Don't ever leave the audience in a state of confusion as to what they have heard and what they have seen is different from what they know. Try to relate it as much as possible and try to be very clear. Even though the presentation is for a shorter duration, let it be very crisp and let it be very clear. And then the slide and the presentation shall commiserate and not vary. For example, I give a slide something there and I talk about differently. Automatically, the one that is presented on the slide and the one that I'm presenting it orally, if they do not match to each other, what happens? Definitely it doesn't look good. It leaves the whole presentation in shambles. People will be wondering as to what they're hearing and what they're watching do not match to each other. So what I watch, what I listen, have to be clear and have to be correlative and should not be contradictory. Now, how to overcome the fear? Yes. So, now look at how to overcome the fear. As I said earlier, a lot of people have this inert fear. Inert fear which they feel that they will not be able to address when they see a crowd. This is a myth. This is a myth. When you are able to talk to your friends, when you are able to talk to a group of people, why do you think that's a crowd there? So, though it can be natural to have a fear when you see a lot of people in a crowded place, yet when you have the confidence, when you believe that you are able to speak, automatically this fear is shattered. So how do I avoid fear? How do I build this confidence? And how do I do this? So get these points thoroughly before we jump onto the dais. So I'm jumping onto the dais and I'll explain to you how to overcome this fear in a very short duration. Look into this. The first one is gaining confidence. What do you mean by gaining confidence? Yeah? Is it very easy to gain confidence? It is easy. It is not tough because when I know the topic that I need to be presented, I need to have complete information on the topic. I present the topic in such a manner that I believe that I've got all the statistics right. But it should take some time. It is not an overnight exercise. It is an exercise which takes some time. I should get a lot of reference materials. I should know what is the topic that I'm, that I'm presenting and what is the information that I require and how do I get this information I should collect this information I should understand the topic before I am presenting the topic so have a complete knowledge of the topic more importantly anticipate questions that may arise during the presentation this is very very important when I am preparing the topic I should be able to relate what can be a question that might come there suppose I talk about public policy in public administration and public policy is a policy that a government has set up as a rule or as a mandatory requirement where the welfare of the state becomes important and the state is benefited because of a public policy. Now there can be a question like can I give an example of how a public policy is being implemented. I can talk about the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act which is a public policy which has benefited a lot of farming communities and a lot of unemployed youth in rural areas. So when I am able to con counter such ideas or questions, I should be able to prepare myself in such a way that I am able to give an answer to any question that might arise during my presentation. So my knowledge has to be exhaustive and not limited and I should prepare the subject thoroughly so that I can feel that I am the best in the subject. The moment I feel that I am the best in the subject, obviously I will have no fear in presentation and I can anticipate questions and answer them accordingly. 
present the same to a small group of confidants when i have my presentation let me do that rehearse before let me talk to a group of friends who can correct me in case i am wrong so that i will overcome any kind of deficiencies and get to the nuances of the details complete information about a particular topic or what i'm going to present will help me to gain a lot of confidence because i believe that i am the best now as i said let's take an example of public administration here one has to have a very good knowledge of what is administration what do we mean by administration and what is the governing body that administers the state then what is the state in administration what is the role of the state in administration and what is the public policy and who drafts this public policy and who has the administrative powers of the public policy if i can have all these answers to the question i will be able to talk about this topic without inhibitions and my confidence level grows when i see the audience attracted to my attracted in their attention towards me so drawing the attention of the audience becomes important and giving anecdotes examples and the topic presentation should be so interesting you give a lot of up to date information so that people will be glued to you examples that are currently in vogue that is being talked about now for example i talked about the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act which is being administered in a lot of villages that can be an apt example to talk about public policy updated knowledge what is the amount that is given how much is benefit that is derived and all the data that corroborates the presentation will help you to give your presentation in a very confident manner talk about the consequences that follow the implementation of the policy talk with examples talk with data and this will help you to reach the audience with a lot of confidence and overcome the fear so the first point is have a complete subject knowledge of presentation of the topic before you start presenting it the second step in gaining confidence is know your audiences who am i going to address to if i am going to address to people who are in their graduation or undergraduation or who are still pursuing graduation the same subject i can give them relative examples i can talk to them with more confidence for example if i am a guest lecturer in a particular college and if i am going to address people who are learning the subject my level of presentation has to be basic but if i am talking about a group of alumni or a group of intellectuals about implementation of a public policy my presentation has to be different with statistics with what has happened previously how do the statistics work and the comparative analysis of one year to the other year and the implementation of policies of every year so the level of audience becomes important and i should prepare myself accordingly size of the gathering you should understand how many people are there in the gathering so that i can address them accordingly the age group so while we address the audience we should also understand who we are addressing what their knowledge levels can be so that we are prepared accordingly in addressing the audiences this is very important in determining the criteria in which the criterion where the interest of the audience becomes important third important factor in gaining confidence or overcoming the fear is how do i start as i said as i believe always commence your presentation with a humorous saying or an anecdote i have seen a lot of public speakers who always start off with an anecdote or who always have a humorous saying and who always continue with sometimes the same humorous everywhere but still if you are able to understand the audience and give a very humorous witty start automatically the audience will be attracted to you and also when you talk humorously in the first sentence and uh, people are moving their attention towards you obviously you are able to garner their attention and your confidence levels increases let the audience enjoy the joke a joke cannot be dry joke a joke cannot be something which you alone enjoy and you laugh on the dice then you make a laughing stock of yourself instead you crack a joke which attracts the attention of everyone obviously you are there the hero of the day and let us understand that every presentation will have its time limit that's the reason why when you go to schools and colleges they have sessions classroom sessions for 40 minutes or 15 minutes since it is believed to the survey that the audience attention can only be held for 45 minutes to 15 minutes and not more than that so when your presentation is no, for more than 15 minutes what i would suggest is take a break at 30 minutes give them an engaging joke again talk them in a humorous manner which is not relevant to the subject again drag them back to the subject for the next 30 40 minutes so that you are able to gra- grasp their attention and make them glue to their presentation this is very very important in their yeah, coming up overcoming the fear the fourth one is your confidence levels and the language try to have a very good language and when i say language i don't mean english suppose you are addressing a local audience your local language should be clear you cannot have a mixed language for example if i am speaking in my mother tongue telugu and then i try to mix telugu and english regularly then i am taking my presentation for a toss i cannot do that i should have one complete language of presentation i should not have a mixed language and i shall be clear with words i shall not wait for words my language shall be flowing my language shall be clear and my language shall be such that it is continuous the flow of the language shall be paced in a clear manner 
What I mean to say here is, I am not pausing for words. I am not trying to find out if that word suits the situation. I should have the language in such a manner that my pace is adequate. Give pauses when speaking, but that doesn't mean lengthy pauses, breaks when speaking, and do not rush. So when you are rushing to the topic, it indicates that you are you are trying to complete the topic within the given time, and you are trying to have some other engagement somewhere, and you are trying to move away from the audiences. Don't do that. Try to pace your topic in such a way. Try to prove that you are giving all the importance to the audience there. and communicate in a language that is understood by everyone that's why i said the language becomes important so this is another factor that will overcome the fear in individual finally how do i go with go with public speaking practice practice before a mirror or practice with a group or with your family members and elicit the opinion of the presentation rehearse 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 that's the best way to achieve success in public presentation once you are successful you will never never have the hindrance or the internal phobia of presenting before any audience so the first time if you are able to come out with success by practicing and ensuring that you practice in such a way that you feel that the same group is extended there you will make it very easy for yourself so for success it's important that you practice a lot thank you very much for all and thanks for watching this video and for more information on public speaking and the art of public speaking i would suggest dale carnegie's the art of public speaking as a best book for